Hey there, and welcome back to the Stay at Home Detectives podcast. I'm Jen. And I'm Sam. And today we're going to do an update on the Madalena Kojikari case. If you've been with us for some time, you know that Madalena's case was the first one that we covered right here on the podcast. And since then, there have been a few very important details that have come to light within the case. So Sam and I are going to cover those updates today. If you're not familiar with Madalena's case, we wanted to give you a little bit of context surrounding the major details of the case before we get into the updates. So Madalena was last seen on November 21st, 2022, on surveillance video getting off of her school bus at 4.59 p.m. On November 23rd, Diana Kojikari, who was Madalena's mother, told a school resource officer that Madalena went into her room that night to go to bed. She also said that her and her husband, Christopher Palmiter, argued that night. The next day, on November 24th, which is Thanksgiving, Diana said that Palmiter drove to his family's home in Michigan the next morning to recover some items. He confirmed the same information to investigators. Diana said she went to check on Madalena around 11.30 a.m. that day and noticed Madalena was not in her room. On November 26th, Diana said she waited until November 26th at 7 p.m. when Paul Miter returned home before asking if he knew where Madalena was. He said he didn't know and asked her the same thing. Paul Miter said he asked Diana if she had hidden Madalena and she said she asked the same. Both said no, which is super weird and strange. But he didn't report her missing to the police at the time. So over the course of the next three weeks after that, Paul Miter and Diana supposedly spoke about Madalena's whereabouts, but never reported her missing to the police. On December 12th, a school resource officer at Bailey Middle School tried to make a home visit for Madalena with the sixth grade school counselor. The counselor said Madalena hadn't been to school since November 21st, which was her last known sighting. No one answered the door and they left a truancy packet at the home. On December 14th, The counselor said Diana called her for a meeting about Madalena. She said Diana told her she'd bring Madalena to school on December 15th and they'd meet about the truancy. On December 15th, though, Diana arrived without Madalena and met with the counselor. Diana told the counselor that Madalena had actually been missing since November 23rd, according to the arrest report. When asked why she didn't report Madalena missing until that day, Diana said she was worried it might start a conflict between her and Paul Miter. Paul Miter claims that he didn't see Madalena the day he left and that he returned home on November 26th. The FBI is helping the Cornelius Police Department with its search for Madalena. Her mother, Diana, and stepfather, Christopher Paul Miter, have been arrested in connection to her disappearance. Both were charged with failure to report the disappearance of a child to law enforcement. Now, one of the biggest updates that we know of and Sam's going to dive into the the most recent updates and give a little bit more detail but from what we know from news reports Christopher Palmiter has been released on bond somehow he made bond but Diana is still in jail so Sam I'm going to hand it over to you to give some of the additional updates on the case one of the biggest updates in Madalena's disappearance is her grandmother Rodika Kojikari actually told WCNC a couple really big updates that really stood out to me. Now, if you listen to the first episode, if not, go back, um, listen to the Madalena Kojikari episode, which Jen said is our very first episode. There is a lot of speculations in there of what happened to her. Like, um, And one of the things that we had talked about, Jen, if you remember, is if maybe she got sold to child traffickers, which is yeah, a huge speculation around the case. So I find it very interesting. Um, her grandmother really believes that Madalena was sold to traffickers for $5 million and may have been forced to undergo plastic surgery to change her physical appearance. My granddaughter is alive, but she's been kidnapped. Rodika Kojikari told WCNC outside court in August of 2023, when Diana and Paul Miter appeared before a judge after being charged with failing to report Madalena's disappearance for over three weeks. Rodika claims that Paul Miter masterminded the sale of his stepdaughter in her interview with WCNC. Chris Paul Miter is the instrument, Rodika said. He stalked them for two years. 
They had no documents in his home. He stole their documents and held them in his home like prisoners. Rodica also alleged in her interview that Paul Miner drugged Madalena and her mother before selling the girl for $5 million. Lately, he would use narcotics to make them sleep, both Madalena and Diana, Rodica told WCNC. He used these narcotics in their juice. Diana and Madalena would drink it, and he took Madalena out of the bedroom and gave her over to traffickers. I don't know whom. Diana and Paul Miter both entered their pleas of not guilty um, in court of November of 2023, and they continue to claim that they have no idea where Madalena is. Rodica told WCNC that she doesn't think this is true. He says he doesn't know anything, but it's not true, said Rodica. Our Madalena is alive, and Diana was warned that if you tell police anything, I will kill you. Chris knows who he sold our granddaughter to, but he is involved with the criminals. Paul Miter and his lawyer didn't respond for a request to the comment. The search for Madalena has spanned across all of North Carolina. Police moved search efforts to this remote and rugged section of western North Carolina after reports of Diana's car being sighted in the area and began the process of reaching out to the community to ask if any residents had seen Madalena or her mother or Diana's car at the time of the sighting. Inside Edition Digital learned that multiple residents spoke with investigators and said that they spotted Diana's car in the days after Madalena's disappearance. A photo of Madalena posing at the summit of Mount Mitchell in neighboring Yancey County confirmed that she had at least visited the area or the state before she went missing, which is located three hours from her home in the town of Cornelius. The Cornelius Police Department refuses to give up the search. They also said that they're not giving up in other articles. Um, I was reading a little bit more, and it said that, especially after what her grandmother said, that they're not giving up. And the weird thing is, is the traffickers came up in the beginning, and they think that's the whole reason why Paul Miter, again, this is speculation, drove to his family's home in Michigan because he, he sold Madalena. I personally believe, and I know you personally believe, everything that Rodika Kojakari is saying because that honestly is the one thing that makes sense because it's weird. So, A, it took you three weeks to report Madalena missing. You randomly go on a trip to Michigan. On Thanksgiving, too? Yeah. There's been no traces of her, no body no nothing. I mean, granted, three weeks is a lot of time, but I kind of have to, you know, 100% like take her grandmother's word for this. I mean, this was in November of 2022 that she went missing. She wasn't reported missing until December of 2022. A lot of these updates came between November and December of 2023, which is exactly one year later. And now we're in January of 2024, so it's only been, you know, like a month since the last updates. And you had made the comment earlier, Jen, if you want to um, go ahead and say what you said about Chris Palmiter and getting his bail posted. Yes. Yeah, so rewinding back a little bit, Christopher Palmiter in August of 2023 posted bail. So apparently, according to news outlets and news articles that we came across when we were doing more research on the updates, the judge gave Paul Miter a $25,000 bond. Now, his original bond was set at 200000 but he pleaded not guilty and was offered a reduced bond, while Diana Kojakari was not. So it could be because Diana is Madalena's mother and failed to report her missing, Trying to like make sense of this entire case is very mind boggling. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy theories and I mean it's it's minimal updates at this time, but the grandmother's statement about Madalena being sold to traffickers. I mean, Sam, you know, this is one of the biggest theories that we had chatted about in the very first episode, like you mentioned. And that's kind of what we were suspecting, just based on Christopher Palmiter's past and Mm -hmm. his shady dealings and all of those things that was something that we kind of assumed now obviously anything that we're discussing here on our personal thoughts and opinions is alleged it's just our opinions and our speculation Uh, but that was the most what we thought possible scenario 
in this case. And you know what? He, going back to the first episode, I mean, he had always promised Diana the world. And it makes you wonder, by promising her the world, and you needed to get money somehow. Now, I, again, total speculation. I believe 100% in my heart that Diana Kojakari knows exactly what happened to Madalena. Oh, I believe so, too. Now, there could be some speculation. It kind of go either way. Based on the grandmother's statement, again, if we're going back to her statement, I think it's possible that Diana knew what had happened, but was probably terrified to say anything. Because he said that he would... He threatened he, her. Yeah, he would kill her. And if you look at her mugshot, this is something we mentioned, too, in the first episode... She has very prominent, like, bruising and marks mm-hmm. on her face when she was taken into custody. So that, to me, tells me that Paul Miter was most likely abusive and probably and did he, something to her in order to keep her mouth shut while they are going to jail. It's just really sad if that's the case. It is sad. And you know how human trafficking is sad to begin with. I mean, it is something that is always been around but it's on the rise and it's it's a very scary thing and now with plastic surgery and you know lord knows where anybody will take somebody for that i mean if she is still alive she's probably not even in this country anymore oh no i don't think so um so what are the chances of her actually being found if she i mean if they did get her plastic surgery I, i mean even even just in general even if she didn't get plastic surgery oh my goodness i mean the the chances of her actually being found now. They both know what happened. And I'm sorry, but God forbid this like hurts me to even say if anything ever happened to my baby and he was missing for two minutes, I would be on the phone with authorities. Why would you wait three weeks to report your daughter missing and claim that you're going to bring her with to the school And then you show up without her knowing that you don't have your daughter. It's just being a mother, that just really, really irks me. And it shakes me to my core. No, I totally get that. And originally I was really against Diana and felt that maybe she had something to do with it. But if we're trying to keep an open mind and keeping all scenarios open... If you think about it as well, okay, let's let's look at it from this perspective. Let's say Diana knew what happened, but didn't didn't play a part in it, didn't really have a choice, and was basically scared into allowing this to happen or letting Paul Miter do whatever he was going to do with Madalena. If you think about it, that might have been the only opportunity that she had to reach out to someone and say, hey, my daughter's missing. Paul Miter may not have known that she was meeting with the school. She probably told the school, hey, I'll meet with you. I'm going to bring I'm going to bring Madalena just so they're like, OK, she's coming in. It might have been a safety precaution thing that she Very did. Very true. It, it really could be. And I mean- then obviously they knew that she wasn't. Madalena wasn't there and that the school would be kind of tipped off like something's wrong without Diana actually having to say anything and putting herself into even more danger but I mean of course either way you spin it it's a terrible terrible situation and as Mm -hmm. a mother I mean we could say we do things a million a million times different but if you think about it too from the update Christopher was holding their papers they're not I don't think they were U.S. citizens were they I don't think so. They came from... I don't think they were either. So if he's holding their documentation, there's no way for her to go anywhere or try to, or attempt to go back home to her family. She's stuck there with him. If he's abusive and he's drugging them... Very true. You know, I mean, again, these are allegations. We don't know that this is actually true. And, and she could very well have a big part to play in it too. We we don't know. But but again, we're we're here to report on the update and just give our thoughts and opinions on it but at the same time just kind of keeping that keeping that open for discussion so I do I do hope and pray that Diana speaks I I, I do too I I do I I mean I don't think I don't think that Christopher Paul Miner is going to speak but I do hope that she speaks and we can finally find out I mean it's been 
almost a year and a half of this poor little girl missing. She just needs to be with her family again. She needs to be with her grandmother. She needs to be found safe and sound. I mean, like we were kind of reading, there's a lot pointing towards they really do think that Madalena's still alive. So as of now, I mean, it, it's a big possibility, especially to be bought for that much money. I, I wouldn't think that she wouldn't be alive. But at the same time, if you just never know with these traffickers and how how they are and what they what they could potentially do I you know it's scary to think about what her fate could possibly be and where she's even at all this time later I know you know a year later that is a long time to be missing a lot can happen in a year so well we know that the Cornelius Police Department and the detectives are working hard to do whatever they can to find leads and hopefully find her because I mean it's almost like she just disappeared without a trace that day that she got off the school bus and nobody knows what happened to her but obviously when we find out more and get more updates we will continue to keep everybody posted moving forward in this case because this has been something that's been weighing heavy on our hearts since we first covered this in 2022 Yes, it was our very first podcast episode in December 2022, and it's still, it's still like Sam said, weighing really heavy on us. And we do, we hope and pray that Madalena's found safe and that she can be brought home to her family, and that whoever was responsible, whether it was Christopher or Christopher and Diana, that they're held accountable for what they did. That's all we can really hope for. But like Sam said, we will keep you all posted on any additional updates on the Madalena Kojikari case. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today, and we will chat with you next time. Bye. Bye, guys.